Hey, welcome to the 40 Finance channel, everybody. It's 2023, so it's time for an updated look at Seeking Alpha Premium. This is a service that I use on this channel all the time. And in this Seeking Alpha review, we're gonna go through all of the top features to help you figure out, hey, is Seeking Alpha Premium worth it for you? as an individual investor. There are dozens and dozens of stock market websites and services out there. Uh, so hopefully by the time we're done with this, you can figure out if Seeking Alpha Premium is worth it for your style of investing. Now, full disclosure, I am a Seeking Alpha affiliate. It's one of the ways that I keep the lights on here at the 40 Finance channel. And at the end of this review, if you're interested in learning more, if you found the review helpful, my affiliate link is in the description. It also gives you 50% off a full year of Seeking Alpha Premium. And just to skip ahead on pricing, with the special link I have posted for you down below, it works out to be about $10 per month. And when you see this feature list, I mean, to me, it's an incredible value. Everybody has different things, though that they're looking for with their stock research. So let's dig in and see if it's a match for you. All right, the first thing that we're gonna look at is just the standard stock pages in Seeking Alpha, okay? And there is so much information on just this one page for any stock you're looking at. I'm gonna use Visa as my example here today. You can see that we have a whole menu of options that we can dig into, but let's just scroll down on the basics. You obviously have the chart. Uh, the current information. Then you have these rating summaries and factor grades over here. We'll get into those in a little bit more detail, but at the high level, you have three different opinions that come into Seeking Alpha. And, and this to me is where some of the value really is. It's not just one person thing or algorithm telling you that if a stock looks good or not. You have Seeking Alpha authors, who are basically people like you and I, folks in the investment community, who write hypotheses about stocks, and those articles get posted on the website after they go through some quality control. That's all listed here under analysis. So these are give or take opinion pieces. Then you have the news pieces, which are obviously more factual. Seeking Alpha has their own news desk that they take the headlines and they cut through to the bullet points and everything that shows up under news. But when we look at this rating summary, you can see that we have three distinct opinions. You have opinions from Seeking Alpha authors, Wall Street, which is Wall Street analysts, the ones that you see on TV all the time, and the quant rating. The quant rating is Seeking Alpha's sort of algorithmic view of a certain stock. Then you have these factor grades. The factor grades are what rolls into the quant score. So the quant score is based on these factor grades and depending on how the algorithm looks at uh, via Visa's current situation, then you get a quant score. Obviously here we see that it's hold right now. Now out of the factor grades, the thing that you need to keep in mind is that they are sector specific. They're sector relative, right? So when you see valuation, and Visa's getting an F right now for valuation, keep in mind that is compared to the whole information technology sector. So a lot of times with me, if I see a negative valuation score, it doesn't turn me off completely because I know that it's related to the entire sector. Sometimes that's not even an apples to apples comparison, right? So if we think about Visa right now, and you think about technology, uh, you know, they could be going against NVIDIA or AMD. So just keep that in mind. All right, now as we're scrolling down further, you see all this information, both news and analysis, but what's one thing you don't see on this page that has gotten particularly annoying in the internet lately? There are no ads, there are no videos, there are no subscription deals, uh, or lock symbols on this site. Now, personally for me, as much as I'm digging into stocks, that's worth the price of admission right off the bat is just not having all that junk, clicking on things and having volume go to 20 and, and videos popping up everywhere of people I don't care about. Uh, if that was the only thing they'd offer, 
I would say, you know what, seeking alpha premium is probably worth it to me, but we, we've barely hit the top. That's not even a feature, that's just a bonus. Now you get past the articles and you get right to the analyst rating, both uh, Seeking Alpha authors and Wall Street. And you can see how it shakes up, 21, 10, and three on the Wall Street side. And on the Seeking Alpha side, you got three, 10, and four holds. That's presented to you right away. You also have these little bits of uh, what the bulls and bears are saying. Uh, they do not have any authors in the last 30 days who are bearish on the stock. Otherwise, we would probably see something here. But if you were to read this little snippet and want to go more, if you just clicked on it, it would take you right to the article. And one of the nice things about Seeking Alpha's content is they've got these bullet points, right? So this is a long article with a lot of different um, data sources posted in here. Um, you know, I'm scrolling my wheel as fast as I can. Uh, and there's a lot to digest. Thankfully, if you're short on time, you've got your whatever, six or seven bullet points right at the top. So that to me makes it a lot easier to digest a lot of this information. Going down a little bit further, you got your company profile, what they do, sector, industry, link to the website, and then revenue and earnings per share. So for a quick look at where this company is projected, you've already got that in your first, whatever, 10 seconds on the stock page. You can see what the estimates are for 23 and 24. And then earnings per share, this is set on quarterly. Let's switch it to annual. And you can even rotate and go gap and non-gap. But all of this information, as far as what the estimate was and the actual, is, is right here in this handy chart. Then if you want to do some math on it, so if you want to get into forward PEs and sales growth and stuff like that, you know, I sort of like table views. Uh, I, I like the raw numbers. It's, it's not hard for me to process that information. But you get a good idea here on where the PE is trending if they hit their numbers and how much sales growth is baked in. Over here, we have earnings revisions. You got 14 up, 12 down. Valuation, member, sector, relative. So uh, P non-gap forwards at 26. The trailing gap is 32. And then on the gross side, revenue plus 20%, sector relative to technology. Uh, EPS diluted year over year, 24.45. Uh, you get some momentum scores on uh, Visa stock price over the past, you know, three months, six months, and nine months, profitability, uh, and even some dividend growth history down here going all the way back to 2012 to where we are today. Keep scrolling. You've got your peers, MasterCard, PayPal, Fiserv, ADP. There's another way to do this. All, all of these little information blocks, right? Whether it's risk, technicals, they are just surfacing the high level data, but it goes much, much deeper than that. So let's go to earnings estimates. I go to this all the time on my channel. Uh, earnings estimates for Visa, it does go out to September, 2027. You know, I, I don't know how relevant, honestly, that is to try to project out that far. But you've got your number of analysts, so you can sort of say to yourself, okay, well, one guy uh, threw in his 2027 20, prediction. I don't know if, if that's relevant, right? 2024 certainly is. We've got 33 analysts. Well, how does it shake out? So you got the low, you've got the high. The consensus is what you're going to go by in most cases. So if they did hit $9.63 on the EPS line, that would put your forward PE at 23.32. So the math is already done for you based on the projections. Where would Visa go if everything turned out as projected? And to me, that's very nice. I also like this percentage column that tells you right off the bat how much things are growing. So when you're trying to figure out, well, what's the growth from 846 to 963 on the EPS line, it's already done for you. Right? So maybe you say, well, I have to have double-digit EPS growth. 
And in this case, Visa actually ticks that column. Same thing on revenue, and you get forward price to sales if these numbers were to hit. So you got 31 analysts saying approximately $35 billion next year, double digit growth rate, that would bring your price to sales down to $12.95 if they stay on pace for that. Now that's just one example. That was the, the earnings tab, but you go into something like the growth tab, and, and here's that sector relative, um, and you get to see how things are going uh, versus the sector, and perhaps more importantly, the five-year average. So one indicator that I really like is current uh, valuation multiple for a stock compared to where it's traditionally been throughout history. With this five-year average here in 2023, yes, you do get the COVID highs, right, where valuations were up, but you also have 2018, 2019, uh, and so forth. And you can go and see revenue growth forward, Visa, 13.89% projected in the future. Their five-year average, 10.87%. That's 27% above their five-year average. So it's little nooks and crannies like this with the Seeking Alpha stock pages that just are, at least to me, they're, they're incredible and they're, and they're wildly time-saving just to kind of go through and click off the parameters that are important to you. All the calculations are already done for you, and nine times out of 10, they're in a charter graph just like this. All right, one of the things that's going on in the background here in January of 2023 is earnings season. And when it comes to earnings and following the stocks that you're interested in, I wanna show you a really cool hack uh, that you can use for Seeking Alpha. So we're on, you know, this was the home page of the Visa stock page, right? We're gonna to go to earnings. We're gonna to go to transcripts and Visa, who reported yesterday, okay? The earnings call transcript, we're not going to Visa Investor Relations to get that. We have the entire transcript right here. And one of the things, I'm not, I haven't listened to this one yet, but one of the cool things that I like to do is go Control F and let's, I'm gonna type in buybacks. Okay, buyback. But check this out, I don't have to go through this whole article, right? Uh, we've got buybacks right here, highlighted, and we got another one right here. So they only said it two times in the entire call, but the fact that this whole thing is here is such a time saver, and if you really want to, can see at the top of this, you can listen to the call. You can play this call on the internet browser. You know, if you're at work, you just wanna to listen to it. Um, you can do that right from Seeking Alpha. And on a similar note, let's see if they did a presentation. All right, they haven't posted the presentation yet. At least it doesn't look like it. But let's go back to October 25th of 2022. And as you allow for 24, 48 hours to get past the earnings call, and you come back here at any point, let's say four weeks from now, let you know you came back and said, what was going on in that earnings call? That information is posted right here in Seeking Alpha, and uh, you can download it as a PDF. You can expand the screen, but this is the same stuff. It's on Visa Investor Relations. They just put it right here. Also a fantastic way to go back on historicals. Let's see how far this goes back. I'm just gonna scroll down. We've got 2021 uh, earnings call presentation. We've got 2020 and 2019, okay? So even per, uh, before COVID. So all this stuff's in the website. To me, it's a great feature and it keeps all historical information at your fingertips. All right, stopping back at the homepage and thinking about uh, the fact that maybe you don't always have a, a particular stock in mind, right? Instead of going to look directly at Visa, you're saying, hey, I, I, I'm just looking for something new to invest in. You know, where do I get started on that with Seeking Alpha? And there's a couple different ways to go about it. 
Uh, on the home page, every single day, there's uh, what they call this day watch, and you have all, all the things that are trending just for today, right? So top gainers, losers, in the news, most active, uh, the FANG companies. But if you are just going to come in and you're like, I want a new idea and I want it now, I would go to this pre-sorted list of top stocks. And this is run by their stock screener, but they've done all the work for you. So you can see here my screens. These are just stock screens that I've done in the past and saved so that I can access them later because stock screens, right, the parameters of a stock screen, uh, technically they change every day, right? So if you sorted by market cap, uh, for example, one day something might be $9 billion, next day it could be 10 or it could be five. It just depends on how things go. But if you have certain parameters that you want to continually refresh, you know, a few times a month to see do they qualify uh, for your basic needs, set up a stock screener and save the settings. Now, what we really came in here for was these top lists, okay? And there is quite a few of them, all right? So they go by sectors. You see top materials, energy, et cetera. You got stocks under $10. You got top stocks by the quant algorithm, top growth stocks. Let's just go top rated. This is stocks rated as strong buyer buy across quant author and Wall Street analyst ratings. So as of today, that's 58 results, right? You just click in here, all the work's done for you. And I like to sort by market cap so I can recognize some of these names. Uh, and there you go. This is a list of 58 stocks that across these three categories, all are receiving uh, at least a buy rating. And if you go down and you want to check whatever tech resources limited, click it, you're right into that stock page that we talked about earlier. So these top stock lists, in addition to what you can set up on the stock screener, and if you want to set up your own stock screener, I mean, honestly, you can start with one of these lists, top rated stocks, and you can just edit the filters. It doesn't really matter. Uh, let's say you wanted to move growth down to here and you didn't care about S, uh, SA authors rating, poof, done. Change the results to 95. But look at all these filters that you can play with. So you have categories, and then you have the filters. So this is all of the different categories. So you can come in here on growth, say revenue forward. Uh, let's do EPS year over year, press done. And then you come back and you edit what, that, what you want that to be, right? So revenue forward, this is minus 20%. We want at least, uh, let's see, 4%, just for the sake of argument. 4% revenue growth. And we want to have, um, how about at least flat on our EPS year over year. Press done brings it down to 43 stocks. So all of this is easy and you have so many different filters to work with on this stock screener. Now, similar to the stock screener, but also you know different, if we go, let's just pick this, payment, CPI card group. I know nothing about this company, but if you go to peers on their stock page, they populate a default uh, index of who they think the peers are uh, versus this company. You can edit that. I mean, look at all this information you get, but you can edit that. So again, I'm going to make stuff up here, but if I wanted to take out Intervac and this one, and let's just pretend I wanted to add Visa and PayPal. Oops, I got to spell it right first. Done. You can even um, organize them. So you can move PayPal up here, Visa up here, compare. And then you go down the list. These are straight up comparisons. So unlike a screener that has to have certain parameters, they're taking the good and bad of all these companies and stacking them up right against each other. You get the charts, ratings, uh, all that's the quant factor. Here you have last close, 52 week high, et cetera, total returns across all these different cycles. Dividends, we've only got two that have a dividend. Uh, valuation, 
So you've put these five or six companies up here and let's just say you want to see uh, the peg, the gap peg from the last 12 months. You've got that right across the screen. Obviously, there's a couple of these that may not have um, a positive peg, so you get the NM uh, for that one. Growth, who's gonna grow the most projection uh, next year? Payments is 17%, PayPal's 12, Visa's 13, CAN is 46, IMMR is 353. What about EPS growth diluted looking ahead? Again, all the information is right here profitability, ownership, uh, risk, which gets into short interest, EPS revisions, are the revisions coming in up or down? All that information's right here. Income statement, balance sheet, cash flow statement. I mean, it's incredible. What about portfolio tracking? Go in here, you can set up as many portfolios as you want. And well, I shouldn't say that actually. It looks like I've set up uh, five or six. I don't know for sure that there's a limit. Uh, however, this is the type of screen you get. I made one for the QQQ holdings just for myself so I could compare the top holdings of the QQQ. And you have all of the different tabs that we've kind of looked at. And since this is a sample portfolio and it's not connected to an actual brokerage, um, it doesn't tell me the historical gain loss, but if I did go in here and I linked a new brokerage account, it should bring up the Plaid interface. Yep. So if your brokerage uses Plaid, like most of them do, uh, you can just continue here and it'll bring everything in and it resets once uh, per day, typically in the morning. So the first day you set it up, it may not have all the holdings, but then when you wake up the next day, everything will be in there. And uh, each morning when you get up, it's relevant to where the market closed the day before. But going back to what you actually track, it's very similar to the stock compare, right? Where you see all of your stocks, year over year revenue, revenue forward, all that stuff, you can sort these columns. If you want highest EBITDA forward, you can do that. There's just so many things. Free cash flow over the past three years. Um, performance year to date, one month, uh, etc. All that stuff is in here. So bottom line, when you've got all your stocks here in one place and you've got all of these facets across here to compare them, it's a very robust portfolio tracker and you're just not gonna find extensive data like this on any other website. All right, one more thing as it relates to portfolios and really any stock on the platform, but you see I'm in my QQQ holdings portfolio. I've got all these different stocks. Uh, what notifications do I want to get on these stocks? And so if I click this little bell, um, it gives you several different options. All right, you have content alerts. Do you want to receive alert when there's a new article, uh, which is the opinion pieces? Do you want to receive alert when there's a news headline come through and you go through and you tick the ones you want and you don't tick the ones you don't want? Pretty simple. Then you get to choose the delivery method. Uh, the ones that I really like, I get through email because I like to go back at the end of the day and read through the headlines and pick out the information I want. And uh, on those emails, the full text of the article is sent to you within an email. And it's got the bullet points at the top. It's got the full text at the bottom. You do not have to go to the website. You can literally sit on your phone at the end of the day, check through whatever you got, 15, uh, 20 different headlines, depending on how you set this up. You can read each article right within your email, uh, save the ones you like, delete the ones you don't. Uh, it's a massive, massive time saver. That's for email. They also do have a mobile app. So for this video, I wanted to go into, you know, the more robust features. They have a mobile app as well. A lot of this information's on there, but if you're getting into charts and you're getting into big tables, I don't know why you'd ever want to look at that uh, on your phone, but maybe you can. I've never, been, I've never done that, but you can definitely read all of the articles, see all the stock page information, uh, your portfolio tracker as well. Uh, I just think in the world of stock research with tables and graphs, you know, my two cents, you're better off doing it on your laptop. All right, so that's a quick review of Seeking Alpha Premium here in 2023. 
I tried to pick out the best features I use all the time, not only on my videos, but also for my own research. And then when you're talking about a stock market research platform, right? Stock market research platform that brings in opinions from individual analysts, Wall Street, algorithmic score, not to mention the financial metrics and stock metrics going back uh, years on end, if you really dug into it. For me, it's the easiest one-year subscription I have in terms of returning value. And, uh, you know, with all these tools out there, I always ask myself, you know, uh, which ones do I use the most, right? So having a YouTube channel, I mean, people send me uh, invites all the time to their little tools and stuff, and I look at them, but I always ask myself, is it better than Seeking Alpha, and how much time will I spend on it? Because I'm on this platform every day. So when you're thinking about it from a review standpoint, you know, is it four stars? Is it five stars? What is it? Uh, best compliment I can give is I'm on this platform every single day, and to me, it's the easiest one uh, to sell, so to speak, to other people just because there's so many different nooks and crannies that you can go down. All right, guys, so if you found this review helpful, you wanna check out more about Seeking Alpha, my affiliate link is in the description, help support this channel. Uh, hopefully I brought you some value today to figure out is this platform worth it to you? Everybody has a different opinion, but I will say dollar for dollar on a value scale, uh, Seeking Alpha is a perfect fit for me. Hope everybody's doing well here in 2023. We'll see you on the next video.